What's going on guys, Killer6 back with another Borderlands Top 10 video, and this time we're taking a look at the Top 10 Rarest Items in Borderlands 3. We're talking about items that have insanely low drop rates, weird drop sources, and specific roles on items that make them absolutely worth the chase. And I think a lot of you will be very surprised by the number one item, so hang around for that. If you enjoy these types of videos, please take a second to tap that like button, hit subscribe for more, and with that, let's get started. Number 10. Getting us started on this list is the EMP-5. This doll SMG is a Mayhem 4 and above exclusive drop, only obtainable from the Agonizer 9000 or the Malawan Takedown. From the Agonizer, it has a meager 7.5% drop chance on Mayhem 4 and 5, which all things considered isn't actually that bad, but that drop chance drops even further to just 5.7% when you go to Mayhem 6 and above, since at that point, it then has to share its loot pool with the back burner, which is also fairly rare at a 6.9% percent drop chance adding to that mess is the fact that if you want to do any damage at all with this gun you'll need to get the adapting prefix to do more damage per shot this lowers your odds even further and trying to farm this thing from the valkyries or wotan is just not optimal at all with that said this gun may be somewhat complicated to farm it might be a little bit rare but we're just getting started on this list number nine Coming in at number 9 is the Hot Drop Launcher from Hot Carl. Now, when I first started compiling this list, I thought for sure that the Hot Drop would be number 1 or number 2 on this list. But the more I researched how rare some of these items can be, I realized that the Hot Drop's 3.3% drop rate from Hot Carl and Devil's Razor is not actually that bad. Sure, 3.3% is rare, but it's going to feel like a cakewalk by the time you reach the end of this list. The thing about the Hot Drop is that it is a blue, unique launcher that can only drop from Hot Carl, who has a total of four items in his loot pool. Now that's why this gun is such a pain to farm. But again, like I said, 3.3% is not gonna feel that bad by the time we get to the, some of these other items. So let's move past this one and get on to some really rare loot. Number eight. Coming in at number eight is the Super Shredifier. Now the Shredifier is a legendary assault rifle manufactured by Vladoff, and like most Vladoff ARs, it can spawn with an underbarrel attachment in Borderlands 3. In order to get the Super Prefix Shredifier, you're going to first need to get the Shredifier to drop, and while this gun can world drop, it seems to do so very, very rarely. So instead, your best bet is to farm this thing from the Raging Titan in the Slaughter Shaft. Now the Titan can be farmed by killing him and purposely leaving other enemies alive, and then downing yourself to repeat the fifth round of the slaughter shaft but even still you're going to have to fight five waves of enemies to get him to spawn again then when he does spawn he only has a one in four chance 25 percent chance to drop the shredifier so to say that farming a super shredifier is ridiculously hard is a massive understatement now i've personally gotten two super shredifiers in all of my time playing borderlands 3 and both of those were world drops when i wasn't even looking for the thing to drop Number seven. Coming at number 7 is another Vladoff assault rifle, which requires another set of very particular parts, the Boomsicle. This Vladoff assault rifle requires you to first go through the steps to complete a side quest called Hammerlocked and defeat the super annoying Anointed X4. After that, you can farm him anytime you like for a 15% chance to get a sickle to drop. Now, the problem is twofold from there, however. First, Anointed X4 will occasionally just fly off the map. Not much you can do about that. But the second and more complicated problem is that only 14% of the sickles that drop will be a boom prefix sickle, as this requires a very specific set of parts to make it happen. This works out to be about a 1-2% to drop chance for a boom sickle every single time you farm the anointed x4 and people say there's no tough farms in borderlands 3. number six coming in at number six is the cloning maddening tracker now i know a lot of you guys saw the title of this video and immediately said to yourself cloning maddening tracker and that's how i also know that you're a mo's main this amazing grenade gained notoriety early on in borderlands 3 as the grenade that was the best for mo's mains to use to constantly regenerate health in order for you to get this grenade and in order for it to be a cloning maddening double prefix you need to roll three specific parts on it. You need Bouncy, Merv, and Divider. The problem is, this grenade can roll up to eight different part rolls or have a nothing part roll in one of those slots. So, to get those exact ones is a very low chance. Now luckily, or maybe not so luckily depending on your point of view, you can farm vending machines for this grenade and I have personally gotten several of these myself that way. However, since this is not a unique or a legendary item, there is no dedicated drop source, so your only way to get it is via random drop or vending machine. Number five. 
Sliding into number five is the White Elephant. Now, much like the aforementioned EMP5, the White Elephant drops from Agonizer 9000, but it can also world drop. And thank goodness for that, because the dedicated drop chance for this artifact is 1.2%. Now, imagine you're hunting for one particular prefix on this artifact. There are 23 different prefixes, by the way. And now you see just how complicated this can get. So just farming the Agonizer, the one dedicated source for this drop, means that you are looking at Cobra or 94% sham farming odds to get the very specific role that you're looking for from there. Number four. Coming into number four on this list are the triple part roll shields and triple part roll grenades. The one shotter, the mimeographing grenade, the thick shield, the trust fund grenade, the bullet hose shield, and so many others. There's like a huge long list of them. Getting a triple roll is super rare, but they can be found occasionally in vendors or as random world drops. So realistically, unlike some of the items on this list, you should be able to get several of these triple rolls in a matter of hours of just save quit farming a vending machine, making them a little bit easier to get. But if you're after one specific triple roll item, well, that's where things get complicated. Let's say you're after the highly sought after one shot or shield. You might spend four hours a day for several days just save quitting at a machine to get one. So the realistic odds of getting any of these triple rolls that you're actually looking for is pretty staggering to say the least. Number three. Coming in at number three is the Cut Purse Launch Pad. Now let me start off by saying that all artifacts will have the same one in 23 chance on the prefixes, but I specifically chose the Cut Purse Launch Pad as my number three because it's arguably one of the most sought after and useful artifacts for all characters and builds, and the launch pad itself is extremely tricky to get. Like I said, there are 23 different prefixes for artifacts in Borderlands 3, and the launch pad can only be obtained as either a world drop or as a 50% chance to drop from Red Rain in the Slaughter Star. Now, I know 50% sounds like a lot, but let me tell you why that's a problem. Red Rain is notorious for just dropping all of his loot off the map, making it literally impossible to farm. That said, as long as you've cleared out your lost loot machine, you'll be fine. It will go there. But the problem with that is when you're doing things like the Slaughter Maps, there is generally a ton of legendaries laying all over the map. So you're going to have to go and pick up all of those things just so your lost loot machine will pick up the artifact. Also, unlike Titan in the Slaughter Shaft, you cannot purposely fail round five of the Slaughter Star to refarm the bosses because they simply will not respawn. So that means you either need to pray that you find this artifact as a random world drop and then manage to get the correct prefix out of 23 total options, or you do the entire Slaughter Star again for that 50% chance the Red Rain will drop this and then just hope and pray that he doesn't actually fling it off the map this time. Number two. Sliding into number two on this countdown is the Vindicator Gas Call. Now, this grenade mod is only available during the Halloween seasonal event at a 6.25% drop chance from Captain Haunt, or a 0.5% drop chance from Loot Ghosts. But what makes this one so hard to get besides its seasonal availability is that the Vindicator prefix only occurs on approximately 1% of all gassed calls. So first you have to defeat the astronomical odds of just getting a gas call to drop, and then you get a 1% chance out of those drops for it to have the correct prefix. This is arguably tougher odds than getting any drop ever in Borderlands 2. But even after that, we still have one more item that is so rare that most of you probably didn't even know that it was in the game. Honorable mention. But first, my honorable mentions. While these items aren't exactly quote unquote rare in terms of how hard they are to get, they're almost never seen and a large number of players appear to not even know that they exist in the game because you have to jump through some crazy hoops to get them. They are the Becca, the Love Machine, and the Vibrapause. Now there's some other ones as well, but I think those are the main three that a lot of people don't seem to know about and they're actually kind of cool to get. The Becca is only obtainable by killing all the Hammerlock Hunt enemies. The Love Machine requires you to do all the Claptrap missions and the Viber Pulse is rewarded to you through your in-game mail from Moxie for doing all the Crimson Radio challenges. Number one. Finally coming in at number one is the Burning Summit. And you guys hear that sound? That is the sound of thousands of Borderlands 3 players crying out in unison. What the hell is that? That's partly because this item is so rare that I myself have only gotten it once and I don't even know how I got it. As you can see in this footage, it was mailed to me after a badass enemy shot me with shock damage rocket launcher. And that happens all the time, so that alone can't be the source. So if anybody has any idea how this triggers and what causes you to get this item, 
please post in the comments below because as far as I can tell, it is so completely random. I have tried a lot of different things in the last year of playing and I cannot get it to happen again. Clearly, this is a reference to popular Twitch streamer Summit1G who is actually a pretty big Borderlands fan. Not clear if he even knows that this grenade mod is a reference to him or if he even knows that it exists, but it seems that Gearbox was trying to grab some popular streamer attention with a couple of references in this game as Dr. Disrespect also has an item referencing him in the two-time sniper rifle. But back to the burning Summit though. This grenade is clearly a reference to the time that Summit1G accidentally killed himself with a Molotov cocktail in a CSGO competitive match, costing his team the win. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list of the rarest items in Borderlands 3. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe for more, and be sure to let me know down in the comment section below what's the rarest drop that you've gotten, and also let me know if any of these items surprised you. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm done. I retire. It's been fun playing Borderlands 3, but uh, apparently, apparently I'm done here. Take care.